okay with rules. If you grew up in church, you understand. But um, the three rules, and this is serious, and then we will get started with the show. Okay, rule number one, um, I'm not gonna be up here all night. Yeah, because I got places to go and people to see. Okay? And so, because you know, blind people, we have a curfew. We have to be home by dark. I don't make the rules. <laughs> and so, uh, rule number two, at the end of the show, I'm gonna need a hundred dollars from everybody in here because I'm a Christian comedian. So there will be all of them. <laughs> and last but not least, before we start the show, Oh man, how can I say this? <laughs> if you don't think I'm funny and you go back to your room, it's fine. I'm blind, I won't even know you left. <laughs> okay, okay, so if it's okay, Sid, can I put my cane right here? Yes, sir, there's a piano right here. Oh, you guys want me to do my Stevie Wonder act later. Okay, okay. I feel safe right here, man. Is it okay for me to stand right here? Okay, okay. Like I said, I'll see you. I'll see you, man. That's why we got so many directors in the back. Yeah, so it's all good. But let me tell you guys a little bit about myself. I'm Leon the Jokester. Um, three years ago, I was diagnosed with an eye disease called retinitis pigmentosa. I'm completely blind in my right eye. I still have some vision in my left eye. Enough to know if you owe me money. And so, so that's all that matters, man. But I moved to Tulsa, Oklahoma in 2004, and uh, I attended Oral Roberts University. Yeah. If I had I known I was going to be blind, I would have never majored in journalism. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't read books in years, say Ann. Yeah, I haven't read books in years. But it's okay. It's okay, man. My wife, she hasn't left me yet, so I must be doing well. Yeah. If it wasn't for her driving me to these shows, man, I'll be walking. Yeah. Like, is he on the way? Not today. Not today, man. So it's all good. God is good. Um, I want to go down a different path today, if it's okay. And that path is telling you guys how rough it's been in my life. Is it okay? Because I got some burdens. Make some noise if you grew up in the church. Okay, okay, you know about burdens. Okay, lay them at the cross. Ain't that right, uh, 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 Sid? Okay, okay. I'm just making sure. I'm, I'm getting used to everything, man. Sid's over there, and uh, the person cutting the check is back there, and the exit door's right there. Just in case of a fire. I get it, I get it. I know. But yeah, man, let me tell you guys a little bit about myself. Man, living in Tulsa, it hasn't been all good. Even though I've been walking by faith and not by sight, recently the DMV took my license, man. They revoked it. They said I was a horrible driver. I said, welcome to Oklahoma. <laughs> I said, welcome to Oklahoma. I was furious, you guys. I'm for real. I told the lady, I said, if you don't like how I drive, stay off the sidewalk. <laughs> I took care of that. Take care of that, man. And so it's all good. I was a case manager for eight years, and I loved that, helping people with disabilities. I just didn't know it was contagious. <laughs> and what happened was, you ever have a job where you're helping people and helping people, and then all of a sudden something hits you, now you're afflicted. And so I loved the job. I still know the people, I still talk to the people, except for the ones that never gave me a raise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we don't, we don't talk to them. That's a whole other ball game. And so uh, recently, I've been going to uh, the church for help, you know? And you're not gonna believe this, but I got fired as a janitor. <laughs> yeah, they told me I missed a few spots while mopping. Can you believe that scene? It's ridiculous, man. And they, it was a huge church, almost as big as St. Anne. This place was huge, man. Let me tell you, the church was so big, when I first started cleaning it, I was white. Now look at my skin. Now look at my skin. It was a dirty church. It was a dirty church. But I got it clean. So 
if St. Ann Retirement Center needs a blind janitor, I'm your man. Let's <laughs> <laughs> get this place cleaned up. It's already immaculate, man. Yeah, I, I saw President Donald Trump walking over there. I said, man, you gotta have a little money to live in St. Ann's. I said, okay, I like this. And so, as you guys can see, I, I definitely walked around this place with Sid. Because if I come over here and trip, get the check ready, Sid. Get the check ready. But no, man, it's been cool. I encourage people to get out in the community, stay active. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to stay young forever. I'm amongst high schoolers today. Yeah, you, you're in high school. Oh, okay, okay, just making sure I wasn't talking to nobody. <laughs> this is somebody. Who is this? Virginia. Oh, we have a, a traveler in the house. You want to take me to the East Coast? <laughs> My wife is not going to kill me for talking to another host. It's all good. We're friends. I, I, I'm, I'm cool with you, Miss Virginia. Man, Virginia Beach. See, I'm going to take her to Virginia Beach. On her dollar, though. Yeah, I'm from the old school, too. Yeah, so it's all good. But I encourage people to get out in the community and do great things, man. You know, don't ever let a disability keep you back. Recently, I started working with the police as an eyewitness. Yeah, criminals lined up. Everybody's going to jail. I can't tell who's guilty or not. I can't see them, Virginia. I just can't see them. It's just how it is. And if anybody in here has any issues with the White House, you just write it down and give it to Sid, and Sid will give it to me, okay? Because I'm always on the phone with them, making sure they uh, got my check on time. Yeah, I'm not ashamed of my check coming every first of the month. Now, my wife takes it all, but, but, but I know it comes. I at least get it from the postman, then I got to give it to her. Man, that's a real marriage for you. Yeah, I'm telling you, man, it's crazy. But this is the part of the show where I get to talk about my son. Give it up for my eight-year-old son, Jared. Yeah. Now, the thing about parenthood, it's been different for me, man. Because now that my son knows that I'm blind, he thinks he can do what he wants. Yeah, he, he does. But he does make me a father of the year every year for Father's Day even though I don't deserve it, because half the time I didn't know he was there. <laughs> I was like, I love you, son. I love you. Now, nobody call DHS after I leave. Okay? You turn that phone off. Oh, man, I tell you. And I don't understand why in Oklahoma, it's only in Oklahoma, you guys. Hear me out. Why, in order for you to be successful, there's this rule, and I hate this rule, that you have to graduate from OU or OSU. <laughs> Who created that rule? Yeah, the other day I actually had an ORU shirt on and I almost got stoned. <laughs> I said, don't judge me. They said, There's been plenty of jobs that turned me down. They said, are you a sooner or a cowboy? I said, no, I just go about the praying hands. <laughs> And so, that's $200,000, man. And that's the, that's the crazy part. I graduated from ORU, right? And I owe them $200,000 in student loans. That means oral robbers robbed me blind. <laughs> when I die, I don't want to see Jesus. I want to talk to oral. I want the angels to escort me to oral robbers. And I've been looking for his son, Richard, too. And you guys will see him before I do. Let him know. Now I want my money back. Man, $200,000, that's an expensive Jesus that I learned about. Yeah, they're very expensive, man. But it's okay, though. President Donald Trump working out a plan, all my loans will be wiped out. I just got to remain blind. <laughs> like, Jesus, don't heal me yet. Into those loans are expunged. <laughs> oh my goodness, man. You guys are hilarious. Hilarious. All right, and so I'm going to tell you guys something else. I grew up in the church, and 
I grew up in one of those old school churches. We were in church so long, the pastor put a sign outside the door that said, trapped in God's presence. Because <laughs> we were. I don't care how many episodes of MacGyver you've seen, you couldn't escape. It was tough, man. It was tough. And the thing about it is my mom, she showed a lot of favoritism. A lot of favoritism. Believe it or not, she loved Jesus more than her own children. Yeah, she had a house filled with pictures of Jesus Christ. Right? She only had two pictures of me hanging up. The day I was born and the day I moved out. Say, and I was just like this. My mom kicked me to the curb. She said, you're 18. Get out the boat like Peter. And moved to Virginia. I said, I'm not going to Virginia. I'm staying in Tulsa. It's all good, man. It's all good. And the thing about it is I get it. And I question my mother's faith once I got it. And you never question your mother's faith. Never. And I did. I asked her. I said, Mom, this house is filled with pictures of Jesus Christ. And I love them and you love them. But 2,000 years ago, iPhones did not exist. Who took all these pictures? Man, my mom pimp slapped me so hard. It felt like I got hit with 66 books, but it was just one Bible. That's probably why I'm blind today, Virginia. But don't call APS. I've forgiven my mother. Don't call APS with your rotary phone. She got a rotary phone upstairs. And so it's all good, man. Then make some noise if you've ever been in love. Yes. Love still exists in Oklahoma City. That's what I'm talking about, man. I was in love once to a blonde white woman. Yeah, her name was Betty. But she got me after two months. She said, Leon, I want to see other people. And I was furious until God sent me my Proverbs 31 chick. My baby mama, Sarah Pearlie, give it up for my wife who's coming to the stage. Now this part of the show, my wife, she kind of helps me. Now, when she puts the postal boards up, don't think I've gotten healed all of a sudden. We practiced this, okay? It's just, we, we went through it a few times. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take you back down memory lane. Is that okay? Okay, okay, so with the first board, okay, the Walmart. I have a problem with Walmart, and I'm gonna tell you why. I'm 36 years old, and now that I get a disability check 30 years in advance, I start observing some things. Wow, a blind man observing something. Okay, so my next door neighbors, Betty and Randy, Guthrie, don't worry, you guys don't know them. I go to Walmart with them, and every single time I go to Walmart, guess what is missing? <laughs> Electrical carts! They're in their 70s, late 70s, and there's no electrical carts. And I feel bad because they're Caucasian and they're telling me to go up to another Caucasian woman on that in that electrical cart and say, ma'am, give me your electrical cart. <laughs> you don't do stuff like that. <laughs> so now the police is on the way because I'm taking electrical carts from the elderly. So I'm going to protest. Now you guys stay in Oklahoma City. I'll do the protesting. I'll go back to Tulsa. You guys don't have to get sick to take you or anything. You guys stay put. Okay? And then with the second slot, I used to work at Taco Brain. Right? Taco Place. Tulsa. Very popular. You guys don't know this, but here, because you're a senior, you can get free tacos. So the next time you come to Tulsa, not to escape, but just to visit me, I want you guys to stop by Taco Brain and get some free tacos. But you have to let them know. You can't go up there showing your ID card from high school. Okay, let them know that you've lived your life and you want some free food. Amen? Okay. 
And the secret password is Mother Teresa. <laughs> if you don't say Mother Teresa, they won't give you the food. Okay. I just want to hook them up, Sid. Okay, now this one. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you guys should be very proud of yourself because you are the generation that really, really changed the game. Okay? I'll explain. Today, in 2019, you can order Uber Eats, you can order DoorDash, and Grubhub. Never have to leave St. Anne, right? But check this out. You guys were the first to invent this in the 70s. You had the first Uber Eats. <laughs> Babe, I know they say it's cheaper than keeper. But you will be left here and I'm going home with Miss Virginia. <laughs> Do not mess up on these boys. Virginia, are you single? We're going to talk about it after the show. <laughs> See, she got that one owner outside. She got an Oldsmobile. That's what I'm talking about. But yeah, the milkman delivery truck driver. Oh my goodness, man. My mother, she always tells me those stories about, oh, we used to have it so good. The milkman would come and give us milk and eggs and butter. And I'm like, Mom, it's about DoorDash now. Okay? <laughs> Times have changed. Same with the next. The next. The number one thing my grandmother, COVID, man, she never wanted to get rid of this. Today we have iPhones. Today we have Galaxy phones. But my grandmother never wanted to give up her rotary phone. She's from the old school. And the thing I don't like about these phones is, especially the rotary phone, today, when we have an iPhone, if somebody was trying to rob me, all I have to do is say, quick, Siri, police. And police will show up. Back in your time, that rotary phone, it was time to see Jesus. <laughs> There's no way you're escaping, because it would go like this, nine. What? It's too late. It's time to see God. I'm sorry. Next. <laughs> if the White House is late sending you your monthly check, you know who you need to call for some money? <laughs> your grandkids. <laughs> yeah, it's time to pay up, baby. They owe you. The government owes you. So if they want to do another government freeze, Call them grandkids. Okay? Next slide. Oh, yeah. What is the most healthiest drink that I created of all time? Now, you guys, I know that you have special meals and special drinks from uh, Chef Doree. Oh, I got it right, Sid. <laughs> but this drink I created. If you want to buy some afterwards, I have cases in the garage that my wife <laughs> is making me sell. So I want to save our marriage. So if you want to buy some, it's vegan water. <laughs> in 2019, everybody's a vegan now. I said, if everyone's a vegan, Chick-fil-A is going to go out of business. Man. And so, I just wanted to put that out there. You guys holler at me, already got Miss Virginia a special case, because you know, we've been talking. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So she did a special case. And so, uh, okay, man, I'm, I'm still married to my, my first chick. This is my, this is my baby mom. This is just my side chick when I come over to the city. And the Lord, he works in, in mysterious ways, doesn't he? And so, Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, so the wards. Yeah, yeah, we got nuns in the house. I gotta be respectful, man. We can't, we can't be having them. Okay, so the next one. Okay, so what is this? Let me see. Oh, yeah, who are the top three, the most important people here at St. Anne's? Turn it around. It's the caregivers. Make some noise for your caregivers. Make some noise for the RNs, the directors. There's Kelsey in the back somewhere. Hold on the sun. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. Yes, see? Everybody, man, I love giving shout outs. Yeah, Oklahoma City Thunder all day. Okay, okay, so here we go, here we go. How are, oh yeah, how are seniors the number one most influential people in the world? Well, recently, you guys should also feel honored. All the youngsters 
had this app on the phone, right? Turn it around. We all wanted to look like you with the face app, right? But we had to get rid of it because the Russians were trying to take over. And so we, we don't even talk about it anymore. But I thought that was really cool. In the middle of me being on the retirement home comedy tour, I said, everybody wants to look like the seniors of America. And the last but not least, this is my, my favorite one. This one, oh man. What, 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 what's going on? I, I talked, see my wife, we, we argued at home about this. And this is the reason why I have Virginia's phone number. You guys ain't serious, slip it to me? That's a Bank of Oklahoma transaction. Oh my goodness, man, my wife is off the chain. So the seniors, oh, no, 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 no. This is, this is, this is what seniors, remember what we talked about? Okay, so what are seniors most blamed for in Oklahoma City, in Midwest City? Car accidents. You can't be on Highway 40 or I-44 or the Broken Arrow Expressway doing five miles per hour. You better put some nitrous on that water. Yeah, before you leave tomorrow, Miss Virginia, just, just put some icy hot on, get in your Oldsmobile, and go south. And I'll be holding up a sign on the side of the highway. Yes, yes. Last but not least, we all make mistakes. We all make mistakes in life. And this, this is a mistake that I have to say from the bottom of my heart, everyone in here has made. Every person in here has made this mistake. And you thought that you put the right name on your will until today. This is who, this is who needs to be on the will. If you need the correct spelling, we have a banner. <laughs> and if you need me and Sid to uh, uh, help you to your room to find it in the closet, and we can bring it down, we can change my name, you don't have to, I can give you my social security number, <laughs> my first and last name, where I was born, all that good stuff. But you gotta get my name when you will. Okay. And so give it up for my wife. That, that concludes that taking it back to the old school. Okay, okay. And so, Sid, now I'm feeling real comfortable, so I'm gonna let you hold my great Charles shade just, just for, the, for the show, man. Now be careful, man, those are my Gucci's. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's, that's them Gucci shades right there. Now I'm just playing Dollar General. Dollar General, man, they had a sale going on, I got five for 10. Five or ten. <laughs> but I love marriage. I really do. I love marriage. I've been married to my wife for 15 years. But no one told me that she was going to rob me like Oral Roberts did. Man, my wife, let me tell you. And I'm going to be careful because I don't want to be sleeping on the couch tonight. But once we got married, no one told me that she was going to take my money. And I'm going to explain that. Now she's in control over my checking account, my savings account, and now my disability check. Her and President Trump are working as a team. Yeah, and I need help. And that's why I say God works in mysterious ways, because now I have a second home. Ain't that right, Virginia? <laughs> Okay, okay. Yes. Arm a little short there, Virginia. Arm was a little short. Uh, my mama told me to lean in a little more, man. But it's been cool. I thought once I started getting my disability check, I could sit at home, eat barbecue ribs, watch Netflix all day. Wrong. Before my wife leaves, because she's a school teacher, she has a long list of chores that I have to complete. Mopping, here's one of them. <laughs> Doing the dishes, even though I leave spots. Taking out the dumpster, all the trash. Yeah, wherever that dumpster is, I just toss it. <laughs> then she created this 
this new chore, and I think every woman is addicted to this chore once she gets married. She wants me to keep the toilet seat clean. I told her, I used to bathroom like an NBA player. I missed the shot and hit the rim. It's not on purpose. I have a situation. But it's okay. Then recently, she started changing my eating habits. She wants me to be a vegan. Mm -mm. I already talked to Chef Dorit. We're putting a stop to that today. And so I told her I'll be a vegan, because I don't like to argue. I'm a peacemaker, you know? I said, I'll be a vegan. I was a vegan for two hours. Then I put in my two weeks notice. Because I've been addicted to barbecue ribs. Shout out to Billy Sims. For years, going to Taco Brano, chicken quesadillas, you can't stop me from eating chicken quesadillas for a bowl of lettuce? <laughs> not good, not good. So I love my wife. Give it up for her one more time. I'm done. I'm not sleeping on the couch. <laughs> Seniors, stop going to Walmart wearing pajamas. <laughs> Everywhere I go, everybody's wearing pajamas now. Lady came to church last Sunday wearing pajamas. And she went right to the back of the church and laid in the bed. I said, man, what are you doing? She said, resting in the Lord. <laughs> this has to change, seniors. I'm for real, this has to change. And another thing, while I'm thinking about it, at 2 in the morning, I know it's independent living, but at 2, two in the morning, stop sending your retirement check to Mike Murdoch. Yeah, because he's robbing people blind right now. And so I'm already suing Benny Hinn. Yeah, because I went to one of those crusades and I gave $100. And I walked up the stage and I'm still walking with a cane. Now when people ask me why do I walk with the cane, I say because of all the gun laws in Oklahoma. That's my license to carry. And so I just wanted to put that out there, man. But we got to encourage people, man. I've been doing a lot of retirement homes. You know, this is like my 20th retirement home. And uh, yeah, you guys can clap. That means there's other homes that are being impacted. Yes. Other retirement homes are being Yes. Yeah, everybody's being impacted. But the toughest retirement homes that I've done are the ones that come with the memory care. And I'm going to explain why. Because a month ago, I did a retirement home slash memory care, and one of the ladies up front, she actually thought I was Denzel Washington. <laughs> Can you believe that, Virginia? I look better than Denzel, don't I? I know, I know you see it. You see the connection? Okay. All right. You see the connection, sir? Denzel. Never met a woman that didn't like Denzel. And so they, they took her down the hall to memory care and had to remind her, it's Leon the Jokester. She said, no, that's Denzel. I know Denzel when I see him. I've seen all the movies. Yeah. And so I thank God. Oh, I thought it was security kicking me out. I was like, okay, I'll get funnier. Just give me a second. <laughs> and so the whole thing with the Denzel deal, I said, okay, that's fine. Thanks for the compliment. So they calmed her down. And they had to encourage her. And that's one thing that I'm about with the Walk by Faith comedy tour. It's about encouraging one another. No matter what your disability may be, I think every human being in life has a disability of some sort. And that's why we have to walk together and lean on one another. You guys remember that song, Lean On Me, right? When you're not strong, I'll be your friend. And I'll help you carry on. And so my optometrist recently, she tried to cheer me up, you guys. She said, Leon, I have good news and bad news. I said, okay, doc, what's the good news? She said, we found a cure for your eye disease, retinitis pigmentosa. I said, okay, what's the bad news? 
She said, it's going to cost $800,000. I said, time out. Do I look like Joe Holstein? <laughs> T.D. Gates? I don't have $800,000 in my bank account. For four shots in both of my eyes, 2020 vision again. The doctor actually lives in Oklahoma City. It's funny when I'm in Tulsa and I say I'm going to Oklahoma City and look at, look at me, I'm here. So the trick is, what we're going to do is we're going to break into that doctor's house. Not you guys. Not you guys. Just me and Virginia and my son and my wife. Yeah. We're going to do it. And I'm going to take 10 people from my church. I go to Victory Christian Center back in Tulsa. And we're going to take 10 members. Because if I go down, the whole body of Christ is coming with me. Yeah. Because I'm not doing prison ministry alone. Yeah, because I'm going to jail. Yeah, breaking in to a doctor's house, I am going to jail. That's okay. And so recently I said, you know what? I'm fine with this. Sometimes in life, we can't stop the inevitable, right? Things happen. Sometimes we are afflicted. Sometimes we wake up, our bodies are filled with pain. But guess what? God gives us the strength to keep carrying it on, right? And so, now when the disability bus comes to pick me up, I hold my hand up high. Even though we argue a lot, when he drops me off at church, I say, drop me off behind the church, not in the front. He says, no, I have to drop you off in the front. I said, no, behind the church, please. The reason being, in church, I don't want everyone to know my business yet. Because if everyone in church finds out that you have a disability or a disease, what's the first thing they want to do to you? Lay hands on you. I don't know where your nasty hands have been. I see some deacons use the restroom and come out not washing their hands. And I didn't see any germ eggs at the altar. And so you can't touch me. You can send me an email of prayer or you can call me on the phone. That's just how it is. And so, before I get up out of here, I just want to share with you guys, if it's okay, what happened? Three years ago, I was diagnosed, true story, with this eye disease called retinitis pigmentosa. The doctors basically said, the older I get, the more sight I will continue to lose. And I said, you know what? It's not over. I'm going to believe the report of the Lord, and I'm going to keep pushing forward. Even though I did have to step down from my job, Channel 6 News in Tulsa did a whole like spread on me. And it was cool. I appreciated that. A lot of people had counted me out. But just like I've already been to over 17 other retirement homes, at the end, you guys have never counted me out. And so that's why I call this the Placard Comedy Tour. So before I go, I want to hear from your mouth to make sure that we are in agreement together. Say in. On the count of three, you're going to say Blind Lives Matter. One, two, three. One more time. Black lives matter. Now, black lives matter. <laughs> but blind lives really matter. That's my time to say, and thank you, guys. Hey, we did a little bit of fun. This is a We're going to pull a limo out from this particular. Keep going to go my next show at 5 30. Thank you guys so much, man. I appreciate it.